Hey everybody, final thoughts time for Dawn of Peacemakers, which I gotta say, I mean, this is a very, very cool project. On Kickstarter right now, you can hit that eye in the top right corner screen, follow the show notes. You should definitely do it to see how cool these minis look. I mean, just, I, I wish my prototype had them because just looking at these pictures, I mean, they're so cute. Uh, although, so bloodthirsty, so much fighting. Oh, cute little animals, can't you just get along? Um, well, of course not, that's why we're here. We're the Peacemakers. We gotta force them to get along one way or another. And I gotta say, this game is very, very impressive. It's a very, very different beast than pretty much anything else out there. It's a cooperative game. Of course, there's a lot of cooperative games. And on some level, this kind of uses the pandemic formula of, okay, on your turn, you can move and you can interact with the world. And, um, you know, in pandemic, you're, the main thing you do most of the time is move around and pick cubes up to try and f basically fight fires. Um, in this game, it's a little different. The main thing you do is you move around and you influence armies by digging through decks and rearranging them. That is a gameplay mechanism that it gives this a very, very different feel. And it's really interesting too. It can create some very interesting puzzles because you, it takes resources to be able to manipulate these armies to look through and say, oh, okay, yeah, they're about to strike. That's not good. This is not a good time for them to strike. Okay. I, you know, I'll spend some more and, you know, fortunately I spent some more. And, oh, they'll take cover. Okay. Well, let's, let's rearrange this. Fine. Every, okay. We know we want them to take a break for a while. They'll take cover this turn. But no! They can't take cover because we want these guys to attack. And if they take cover, these guys won't do enough damage to remove one of the units from the board. And by the way, um, the rule, it may sound like, oh, they're still killing and whatnot. It's just that if any unit takes too much damage, they will retreat. So they're, they're just gone. So we can't let them leave. Uh, but we, want, we wanted this guy to leave. We don't want him to take cover because if he leaves the tower, they will lose um, motivation. And that's going to drop them by two. And that means we're going to be within um, you know, the side of the lane. So, yeah, okay, no, we can't have him take cover. But if he strikes instead, he'll actually wipe this thing out, and that could be a real problem for us. Okay, Jen says, don't worry. Don't worry. I'll give you some influence. Draw a third card. Maybe there's another thing. And it's like, ah, oh, change of plans. I didn't even show you change of plans. That could make everything change. What's it going to be? Um, so spending those resources to try and manipulate them, in theory, should work. And it often does. But sometimes, in, in spite of your best efforts, They'll zig when you tried as hard as you could to get them to zag. Because these two armies do have their own motivations, their, their own AI that they will follow, and you're just trying as best you can. That's your number one thing, is to modify AI instead of to firefight. That's really cool. That's unlike anything else I've ever seen. And particularly um, because in a cooperative game, players can share. Okay, I, I'll, I'll let you draw another card while you're modifying, but I really needed this card to get where I needed to go. This is my only thing that lets me move three steps. I'm like, I know, but I really need it. Okay, well, you know what? I've got a carrier pigeon, so when it comes to my turn, I'll use the carrier pigeon. Um, if you save a fast boot for me, I'll get it delivered to me, and then I can do... So you get those kind of nice collusion between players moments as well. And you, you do get a chance to cooperate quite a bit. I've only played it as a solo and as a two-player game. And uh, so I suspect the more players you have, the more interaction there is between players. But I think there's a decent amount as it is right now, just because resources are so tight. You get so few and you have to use them wisely. And sometimes you just use them for their primary use, which is, right, we just got to manipulate these guys into not killing each other this round, because if they could just get a little bit more tired, we win. But other times, you got to do really clever things. Like you saw me, um, you know, poison the food of the commander because now he's weak and then all I got to do is just he takes one hit and then I got, if, if I pull him out, uh, then we'll have dropped the morale without any downside really quickly and easily. And um, I know that I can get, since he's wounded, he'll be the first to be struck. Um, instead of having to do five points of damage to him, we only have to do three to him and we can get the morale, which will be really, really sharp. But will I be able to find the, um, let's see, oh, what is it? The, you know, or the, the follow me card. Um, will I be able to find that? Oh yeah, here it is, the, the friendly guide so that he'll follow me and pull away so I can get him to safety. Or do I use that friendly guide to move this archer out of his tower, which will drop the morale of his team by one, and put him over in a position where he could be the only one firing at the commander, or he could be the only one um, that now that he's out here, if he's the one who gets attacked by both of these two and they coordinate fire and knock him out, boom, they lost one one, two uh, motivation there, and that's what we need to do to tip the tide. That's what this game is all about. It's the same kind of tactical skirmish army game type considerations you have, but in a completely different scenario because you're an independent third entity on the board. You're trying to make sure both sides take equal losses um, so that they'll both retreat at the same time. It's really cool, really different. And 
What I just showed you and what I just talked about here barely scratches the surface, but I can't say any more because this is an epic campaign game that plays out over 12 scenarios. And each time you get to a new scenario, like um, Fight at Dawn or Operation Wet Feathers or um, well, I, 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 actually, some of these even some of these names could be spoilers, so I'll just leave it at that. But every time you get to a new mission, well, what I just showed you was the very first mission of the game, and it's an introduction to the game. It's almost a tutorial. It's a pretty straightforward. It's going to be kind of tough to lose. It's a little challenging if things go away, but if you're careful, you'll make it through the first. But once you finish the first scenario, um, the game comes with a bunch of additional decks of cards, and they all say right on the top, stop. Do not open me, because of course this is going to come in shrink wrap. Do not open me until, uh, until you're told to open deck D or uh, deck A. Or in the case of this one, do not open this until you finish the first scenario. And when I do, I will introduce a bunch of new stuff. And then it says, stop! Don't look any further until you finish scenario two. And then later on, it says, stop! Don't look any farther until you um, um, enter scenario 10, and so on. And there are a bunch of, well, all kinds of stuff. Stuff you would expect, like new units, um, new orders, new, um, you know, uh, new abilities, new, new, new type stuff. But in addition to the stuff you might expect, there's really big game-changing stuff, like, like radical sea change type things. And I would love to talk about those, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to say this game, um, as you play through the 12 scenarios, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bolder and better. It's not only new decks of cards. Hey, the game comes with a box. Don't open this until you're told to. The game comes with an envelope. Don't open this until you're told to. In addition to all these cards, don't open, etc., etc. There are going to be lots of twists and turns and surprises. Now, I've only played through about half, and then, uh, just to get this video t ready in time for the Kickstarter, I went ahead and I opened stuff I wasn't supposed to open, and I looked ahead to see what was coming. I'm like, oh my gosh. Wow! I, you know, by the time I'd finished playing, I already thought, my, the things that get added to this game are amazing, but it just keeps layering new thing upon new thing. And this first mission that you play, it's almost kind of like playing Pandemic, where all you're doing is moving around and picking cubes off the board. There isn't anything about trying to cure diseases or um, special powers or anything. It's just really simple, basic, move around and get cubes. Um, so you got to take that in mind. I was just, I mean, right off the bat, there were interesting decisions. Hopefully I demonstrated that a little bit in the run through, but it's very, very simple. You get a few missions in, and you're like, wow, this changes things up a lot in a really, really cool way. And it makes it very, very compelling and compulsive. And then once you finish through the 12, um, the game is going to give you reasons to go back and play through the missions you've already played so you can get even more gameplay out of the stuff you've already experienced. And then if all that wasn't enough, this is crazy. Um, I really didn't expect this. But, you know, there is this motivation um, for, you know, I was keeping track of the armies in the run through. The game comes with another one, which means instead of playing as the peacemakers, you can play this game as a full-on war game. Where I've got mine, you've got yours, I'm, uh, I am in control of one deck, you're in control of the other, but this is not a game where, oh, I'll just give them orders and I'll tell them to move and whatnot. You're still using this two-deck system trying to get your units with imperfect ability, uh, with, with, with imperfect communication, to get them to do what they want. And so it's a very, very interesting, a, a really different take. It's kind of memoirish, kind of, but sort of different. So if the cooperative game wasn't enough, um, you know, and again, this cooperative game that's really, really unique, it's got a full-on competitive game as well, where you can go head to head and do warfare with um, multiple decks of order cards, you know, or more to the point, a ploy and attack. So this turn, am I going to have them do a surprise strike, or am I going to have them do a T boldly take cover, or am I going to have them unexpectedly change plans? You know, whatever it is, uh, it's a very and I, I don't I haven't tried it. I'm not really interested in playing a war game, but I think it's really really cool that that's in this box as well for people who want that. And you know what? I haven't even told you everything. I want to tell you all the cool secrets and surprises, but I can't. So I'm just going to have to leave it there. Uh, you know, take my word. There are there you know there there are some big big like wow. 
type moments. And I mean, they're really, really cool when they happen. But then on top of that, the core game itself is very, very neat. Challenging in a very different way than pretty much any other deck builder on the market. Um, because this is a deck build, I mean, normally, I, this is interesting in that, you know, we, are, we as heroes are kind of reactive because we're trying to respond to the fact that there's these two armies trying to kill each other and we're just trying to stop it. As opposed to us being in charge of the armies trying, and, and I'll be honest, it takes a little bit of getting used to. You keep thinking, right, okay, right, now how am I going to make these guys attack? No, 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 um, you, you don't do that. You, you just try to manipulate them and try to steer them in the right direction so that they'll do the right thing instead of just saying, okay, I need to move this guy over here to claim this because then that will give us more morale, et cetera, et cetera. It's neat, it's clever, it's fun, it's got a lot of replayability, it's got a lot, a lot, a lot of surprises waiting for you in Dawn of Peacemakers. And that's it, folks. Thanks for watching. You know what? It's tough. I do have one little complaint about the game. And the thing is, it's a minor complaint. And I can't really tell you what it is because it has something to do with one of the things that does get unlocked. There's, there's one element of the game that I don't like. And, and, and don't get wrong. On the whole, I really like this game. I like cooperative games. I love the theme. I love being a peacemaker. I'm trying to stop the fighting instead of start the fighting. Or I'm trying to, you know, um, put out the fans of war instead of fan the flames of war. Did I say that right? Whatever. I, I, I love the theme. I love the, I love the gameplay. I love the really unique take. I love the tough choices, especially later on. In the, in the first couple missions, they're pretty simple, but things get much more interesting as you go deeper and deeper. There's one thing I don't like about the game, and I can't tell you what it is. Okay, I'll tell you what it is. Uh, it's a minor spoiler, and it's not even a spoiler. It has the potential of being a spoiler. Um, but if you don't want anything spoiled, just bear in mind it is a minor thing. It's, it's a there's a legitimate reason it's there. But if you don't want to have that one spoiler, go on ahead and stop watching now. Go check out the Kickstarter if you're interested to learn more. And I'll say, have a nice day. Talk to you later. So long uh, in five, four, three, two, one. Okay, bye bye. Are you still here? This is the, again, it's not really a spoiler. Don't think about it too much. There's one thing I don't like about the game. Um, memory. Remember I talked about, I saw, as I was getting a little bit deeper, I was getting to the point where, hey, maybe I'll draw three cards. And, oh, it's a strike, a cover, and uh, not change of plans. Or, you know, change of plan means I reshuffle everything back together and I start and then I draw again. Oh, and it's two covers. It's two cover and a strike. And a big part of the strategy is, right, okay, well, you know what, let's have them take cover now. Uh, let's have the archers take cover now, and then let's have the soldiers strike, and then the soldiers take cover. I rearrange it, I put it down here, and now, I'm going to remember what they're going to do immediately. As the game goes on and we discover more things and there's a lot of stuff going on, I'm going to have a hard time remembering. Right. In two rounds, I've already forgotten. What was it? Uh, it's the, is it the soldiers are going to take cover? I think that's what it was. So there is a memory element to this game is what I'm saying. I do not like the memory element of the game. And, um, and the thing is, I, you, you, what you could do is you could say, oh, well, let's just go on ahead and play with everything revealed, everything, play everything face up. Um, but there are reasons you can't do that. There are reasons that even if you've looked at what the cards are, um, you know, and, and everybody's made their plans about what they're going to do, you can't necessarily trust that things are going to go the way you think they're going to. So, um, you know, not being able to see the cards is an important element of the game. And that's why the memory element is there. And like I said, I'm not keen on it. I don't like memory elements in games, but this game does need it for good reasons. And I won't say anything more than that. So that's one thing you got to know, because maybe you're like me, you don't like that either. Now, one thing it's pretty easy to deal with. Oh, well, okay, well, I'll just only pay attention to, I'll never dig deeper than two, because chances are I'll be able to remember the first and the second until certain things happen um, that make you have to reevaluate, uh, um, you know, what you think you saw and all that sort of stuff. Oh, I got I, I, can't, I can't talk about it. I can't talk about it. Um, but I, I just wanted to say that's really, otherwise, it's, it's really neat. So I just wanted to throw that in there in this kind of semi, but not really spoiler sort of way. And that's it, folks. Thanks again for watching. Uh, have a very, very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Bye-bye. Hey,